What's up everyone, it's Briggs from Lame Chain, and in this video I'm going to be showing off our Agent Inbox UI, which is a web app we've developed and open sourced, which you can use for interacting with your human in loop lane graph agents. So here I have our social media agent um, opened in the Agent Inbox. I'm using the deployed Agent Inbox, even though I'm running this local graph, and that's one of the cool things about the Agent Inbox, is you can use deployed graphs or local graphs um, and connect them and interact with them both. So here I have a scheduled post that was generated and it's proposed to be scheduled. Uh, we can see it's AI and real estate, so it uh, gives me this nice description here, which I can also toggle to show the current state of the thread. Um, but now I want to look at the description, so I can see um, all these different fields like the post, some instructions on how to uh, interact with this interrupted event, uh, additional instructions around scheduling date. So this is just a way for me to kind of context, context dump all the different fields. Um, and then I have uh, like the report that was generated to get this tweet. Um, and on the left, the different actions I can take. So edit or accept, I can either edit the date um, and the post or accept it. I can ignore, mark as resolved, or respond. So I can respond and say something like remove all the emojis. And when I hit send, it's going to call my line graph graph, sending back that response as the uh, response to the interrupt. Uh, it's then going to process that response and update my page right here for me, as we can see. Um, down there, it was streaming what node it was on, and then when it updated, I didn't have to refresh, I didn't have to go out or anything, it just updated the page I was on with the new input. So we can see it removed all the emojis. So that is a quick demo. Now let's talk about um, exactly how you would use it uh, and the different aspects into implementing uh, human interrupt for Agent Inbox in your LangGraph graph. So what is the Agent Inbox and why would you use it? Essentially, it's a way to manage and respond to your human interrupt events in any lane graph graph. So as we see in this diagram, I have my lane graph app up here. It can be a JavaScript or TypeScript, or sorry, JavaScript or Python lane graph app. Um, it just needs to have an interrupt event, uh, which passes in a specific schema, which we have outlined in the GitHub readme, and we'll go over in a second. Um, and then once that interrupt is triggered, the Agent Inbox can use the LangGraph SDK to fetch those interrupt items. Um, and since it's using that specific schema, we know exactly what fields to render and say the description, um, what different types of actions to accept. And then you, the user, can take one of those actions. Um, there are four actions which we have considered to be the most common and uh, useful actions for these human interrupt, sorry, human in the loop agents. And that is edit, accept, respond, or ignore. So edit is typically used to edit um, a dictionary of fields. So if we go back to the agent inbox, we can see this edit event has a date field and a post. Um, so let's say it generated this post and I don't like it. I don't necessarily need to respond to have an AI update it. I could just manually update it um, or manually update the date. There's also just accepting it if you want to just straight up accept the different dictionary fields and that's a common use case. Uh, the other is ignore. So let's say I see this post and I realize, you know what, I don't even want to post anything about this. I can simply click ignore and that's going to send back an ignore event uh, which your graph can handle in a few different ways and in this case it just errors out. There's also mark as resolved. Uh, what this does is it updates the current node to the end node, which essentially just ends the thread. Um, but it's a little bit different than ignoring because it's saying, hey, this isn't like a bad post or I want to just ignore this, but I, I resolved it elsewhere. And then finally resolve, which what we, or sorry, respond, which is what we saw in the beginning, it allows you to just send in a simple text response uh, back to your graph and then your graph can deal with it however you want. In this case, it's going to pass it to an LLM and then update the post. Like I said, it can go with any LangGraph app as long as it uses the specific human interrupt schema, which we'll cover right after this. And then when you respond, it's going to resume the graph where you left off, passing in that human response. So now that we've discussed kind of how it works, let's jump into the schema and talk about how you can implement this in your LangGraph graph. So to implement the human interrupt for the agent inbox in your code, you're simply going to need to use the interrupt function. And then uh, you can copy these types into your code, and we also are exporting them from the LangGraph, JS, and Python uh, pre-built endpoints. So you see here we have this interrupt class in Python and interrupt our human interrupt interface in TypeScript. Uh, this is the schema which you need to pass the interrupt function, um, and that's the different fields that the agent inbox requires to render your interrupt. Um, and it contains an action request, which is an action string. As we can see here, it's the name of the action. Then the args, this is just a dictionary of um, a different key value pairs, and that's what gets rendered here. So if your um, human interrupt can accept editing and accepting like this one can, then the args will be rendered and the user will be allowed to edit or accept them. Uh, the next field is the config. This is the human interrupt config, and this 
this is where you define what actions are allowed to be taken. So allow ignore, allow respond, allow edit, and allow accept. And then finally, we have an optional description. This is just a string value, and it's what, and it what, it's what gets rendered right here in the sidebar. And it gets rendered in Markdown, so you can provide Markdown text here. So once you have all those fields set, you pass them to your interrupt function. That will then interrupt your graph whenever it gets reached. And then when the user interacts with this task, the response will be a human response. So it, it contains two fields, a type, which is either accept, ignore, response, or edit, and then args. Um, if you do accept, then args will be null. If you do ignore, args will be null. If you do response, args will be string, because it's just going to be the plain string response. And if you do edit, it's going to send back the same action request object which you passed in, but with the updated args from whatever the user edited them to. Uh, it's going to contain the same action name, and then let's say I only added an S right there, or an, an S right there. It's just going to send back this exactly how it was sent in, and then this, but with that S. So it's just going to be the args, but they're going to be slightly edited. We also have an example in Python on how you can implement this, and the same goes for JS. You'll simply define your human interrupt object, pass it to the interrupt function, and then once the graph is resumed, it will return the human response value. So let's get the agent inbox setting running locally, connected to our local graph, and we'll talk about how to set it up for your graph too. So to run the agent inbox locally, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to the agent inbox GitHub repo, which I'll have a link to in the description, uh, copy the git URL, and then navigate to your ter terminal and clone this repo. Once it's done cloning, navigate into the agent inbox repo and install dependencies via yarn install. But once this is done, we're going to spin up the uh, web server and that is all you need to get the UI code running. You don't need any more dependencies or environment variables to get it set up. Um, all of the next configuration steps will happen in the UI. So I run yarn dev, wait for a second for this to spin up my server. I will then open it up my browser. And then once it's loaded, it's going to recognize that I don't have any inboxes already set. It's going to prompt me to add a new inbox. So we can see right here, it said there were no inboxes found. It's going to say, welcome to agent inbox. Please add a new graph. Um, the first field is the assistant or graph ID. This is either an ID to an assistant or a, the ID or a name to a graph. In my case, I'm going to be using the social media agent, so I'm going to say generate post. Now the deployment URL. The nice thing about the agent inbox is you can use local graphs or deployed graphs. In my case, I have my graph running locally, which is something you also need to do in order to get the agent inbox uh, running. You either need a graph running locally or a deployed graph. Uh, I'm going to use my local graph, so HTTP, localhost 54367, and then an optional name. I'm just going to call this gen post local. This is just what's going to be used in the sidebar and you don't actually need this. And now once I hit submit, since I have my graph running in LangGraph Studio, it's going to pull in all the interrupted threads from this graph. So we can see I have a few posts that were generated uh, this is using the same graph that we saw in the intro. And I can select one, see the different fields, um, or I can select like this one, which only allows accepting or ignoring, right? So I have these two different links. It's for authorizing um, the social media agent to post on Twitter. You don't need users to respond or edit these. Um, so what this interrupt event has done is it said only allow ignoring or accepting. Um, and then it renders the args in this field, uh, but they're not editable. I can inspect the state. And the nice thing about local uh, running using the agent inbox with a local graph is you can also click this button and then open up uh, the current thread in LangGraph Studio. So if I click on it, it's going to show me the same uh, UI that I would see if I was in the studio, but it's just a really easy way to uh, go from an interrupted thread, click that and instantly open it up in the studio so you can see all of the different nodes that were called um, and visualize your graph as well. I can go out and as you can see, I'm in the interrupted tab. I can also select the all tab and this is just going to show me all the different threads in my graph uh, with the different statuses. So those are interrupted, idle, busy, and then also error. And this is just if I want to quickly find a thread uh, by the ID or visit the studio for a given thread um, which had a different state than interrupted. Uh, in this case, I only really care about interrupts because I, this is how I interacted them. So I'm just going to focus on this. To wrap it all up, let's talk one more time at it, about a, the high level conceptual uh, overview onto how to use the agent inbox. So you have your graph. This can be any lang graph graph written in any language as long as it passes in the schema, which we saw in the readme just a couple minutes ago, to the interrupt function. Then when an interrupt is triggered, you can open it up in the agent inbox UI, and that can be running locally like we just set up, 
or you can go to dev.agentinbox.ai and connect your own graph uh, running on our deployment. Um, so like, like we saw before, when I configured the agent inbox, it's set up in a way to connect to any deployment. Um, so you can use our deployments. So you don't need to worry about constantly having your web server running. You can then interact and inspect your different tasks. Um, uh, you can use all the different edit, accept, respond, or ignore actions. And then once you take some action, it's going to resume your graph where it left off, uh, passing in the com using the command API to resume based on the different fields, which you set here. And it's going to return that from the interrupt function, returning a human response object, which we also saw in the readme. So that's how you use and set up the agent inbox. And I hope you all use it and enjoy it for your own LangGraph human in the loop agents.